And we're staying on our coverage of the Anambra governorship election where the people of that state have two different stories to tell. On one hand, a beavers that, is, that works. On the other hand, beavers that isn't working and people are not able to get accredited. Now, to help us look at all of these issues arising from this election, we have Emeka Madunago. He's a public affairs analyst, a journalist, and also um, an indigent of Anambra State. Good to have you join us. Yeah, good afternoon. Thank you very much. Um, uh, you have been following this election. Um, what's your impression of the conduct so far? Did your expectations align with INEC's performance? No, 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 not at all. INEC has largely disappointed Nigerians. It's, it's unfortunate that an election of just 2.5 million voters, you know, for such an election, INEC has not been able to put his acts together. You saw the agony people went through. Leaders of thought in Anambra State, you know, um, traditional rulers, political leaders, religious leaders went through to persuade IPOP to back down on their threats to drop their one week seat at home. They went through a lot. It, it was a torturous process. It wasn't easy. The governors of the Southeast were also involved in discussions with IPOP, and eventually this threat was dropped. Now, this affected the collection of PVCs by you know, voters. But nevertheless, people, you know, some people, because I had said it, I, I knew the election would hold, and that, you know, people wouldn't turn out early. But mm -hmm. as, you know, the day progresses, that people will turn out. And that's what has happened. People started turning out because I know how my people react to, you know, issues of, you know, such issues. They'll wait for some people to go out first, survey the environment, and then get back to them that, okay, everything is fine. And you saw, as you know, the day progressed towards uh, noon, so many people thronged the polling uh, stations. But INEC officials were not there in many places. Even as at 1.30, as at 2 p.m., as at 2.30, INEC officials were not in some of these places. And you find out that the beavers machines malfunctioned in so many places, disenfranchising so many voters, so many voters. I, I, I thought that, well, okay, INEC could be excused to some extent because of the situation, the, you know, the adverse task the, you know, of organizing an election in such, a, in such difficult circumstances. Mm. Remember, some of the offices were Absolutely. burned. The officials couldn't move around. They couldn't even transfer the registration of many, new, many voters to new polling units. It, you know, all these things were there, yes, you know. I'll, 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 I'll grant that to them. But this same problem arose in 2015 during the presidential election where the smart card readers malfunctioned in so many places. This is 2021, six years and down I, the and line. And I guess that's what people talk about, because a lot of people expected that security was going to be the major major issue. In well, this security election. is also part of it, it because is, but I understand It does that. look like, yes. but people thought that if, if there was going to be voter apathy, it was going to be, be because of security. People showed up but cannot vote because of um, the beaver's machine. But I like they used this during the by-election in um, Delta in a, State. In Nassarawa State. And, and they got 97% um, success rate and then they came on the back of that thinking that um, it was going to work. Was that a premature, um, was that a premature sort of expectation from INEC that because it worked in a by-election, it will work in a statewide election? No, no, no. If it works in an, 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 you know, an election is an election. The only difference is the scope of the election. You know, and what the interesting about thing the is coverage that, area? Yes, of course, of course. You know, this is not a general election that you have to conduct across so many states. Mm. This is just an election, you know, you have, you have, they have to conduct, you know, in a small state. Anambra is not such a big state. It's a state that you can easily access. It's not a uh, largely riverine like uh, Bielsa, for instance. So, and Anambra has a good network of roads. You know, so it's a state, you know, that you can easily move materials around. And then why did, first of all, it was the issue of um, INEC officials not turning up in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. Now, let me clear one thing. I was telling people that the people will not be, will not be scared away from coming out to vote because of the last security presence. But rather that the security press, if it was truly there, if it was truly going to be there, will encourage people to come out. That has been a complaint about this Monday sit at home. Mm. That if you have adequate deployment of security agents, 
across the states of the Southeast. People will come out. People will go, go about their businesses because they won't want, you know, hoodlums to come and attack them, burn their shops, destroy their vehicles, destroy their goods. You know, because you have sundry, you know, I mean, different kinds of people claiming to be IPOB, going about molesting people, burning vehicles, doing all kinds of things. And the security agencies are not really dealing with these people. But if you, if they can clamp down on these people, you will see people start coming up. Because IPOB has said they've canceled the Monday seat at home. Mm. But the point is, is the people must feel secure enough. And with all the assurances, the show of force, that okay, uh, the police will be there, civil defense, the military, the DSS and all of that will be available. I told people, I said, on the strength of that, people will come out to vote. Because even the candidates, uh, the, the state government, and various um, leaders in various sectors, they did a lot of sensitization, a lot of mobilization. To, to get as a matter out. of fact, as a matter of fact, I learned that around the new polling units, a lot of people didn't even know that their names had been moved to those polling units. So they went to the polling units that they are previous, where they are previously registered, not knowing that yeah. their names were even in the polling units beside their homes. So you can imagine your house is beside a polling unit. You don't know that your name is so, on the list uh, there. You're going elsewhere. Just let me quickly put you on hold. We need to get update from our correspondent who is at the polling unit where Chukuma Saludo is supposed to be accredited but has not been able to do that. Femi, um, what is the latest? Is there a miracle at this point? Yes, um, uh, uh, up, to, up to this uh, moment, the candidate of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, Professor Chukuma Solodo, is still unable to cast uh, his ballot, and that is uh, due to the failure of the uh, Beavers uh, Prize. That is the new technology I like to introduce uh, to this election. And now, uh, Professor Chukuma Solodo will give his opinion on the issue so far. Oka, the capital of Anambra State. I don't know, I don't have the details. So what can you say about this development? You've been here now. Um, it's not just three hours. I have been here since 11.30. Um, I've been here since 11.30 this morning to cast my vote. But up until now, I have not been able to do that. Um, you can see the crowd in here uh, massively. All right, um, network challenges there. Perhaps probably one of the issues with the uh, Beavers, as our correspondent stated earlier, that uh, they are saying it might be network issues. But you, you listen there. He's still not been able to get accredited. We're not even talking about the voting process. It's just for people to be accredited before even voting. You saw the crowd there still waiting to be accredited in one polling unit. We cannot um, ascertain at this moment how many polling units that's going on in Anambra State. But talk to us about that, what you, what's your interpretation of the frustration you saw in the faces of people sitting there? No, I got it for me because I've been in touch with, I've been in touch with people back home, you know, because early this morning, I was still sending messages to people, go out and vote, go out and vote, you know. So don't, don't deny yourself, you mm. know, of your electoral franchise. So I knew people were going to turn out and they did turn out you know so this issue there's there's you know inter societies and NGO is accusing INEC of denying 70 percent of voters the right to exercise their franchise the electoral franchise that the exercise should be cancelled in its entirety I don't understand that INEC is talking about cancelling you know, the exercise in areas where elections, the election has not been The, not the, the resident electoral commissioner spoke earlier. He, he did say that they are trying to have vast the areas where elections did not take place because of maybe technical glitches or late arrival of INEC um, staff. And then, then some of those places will not be able to hold elections today. And a new, probably tomorrow, a new date will be communicated. They are to brief in another maybe 30 minutes, one hour, we'll get the latest from INEC. But, you know, just when the, if you remember when the, um, the National Assembly was debating on whether or not we're ready 
for electronic transmission of results. Um, there were those who were supporting it, and there were those who were against it. Do you think that this does give uh, credence to those who, or credibility to the arguments of those who were against electronic no, transmission no, of let results? Let me tell you. This, the unfortunate thing is that the three senators from Manambra State didn't even vote for electronic transmission of results. And this is unfortunate. You are people representing constituents. You should be able to work for the interest of your people. Interface with INEC. What is the problem? This, what are we talking about? Is he not using technology? Are we going to develop a new kind of technology in Nigeria for the you know, conduct of elections? The unfortunate thing is this. You see, I, the National Assembly had warned INEC at a point. Before you introduce any innovation, test it, test it, and test it again to be sure that that innovation will not disappoint people. INEC did well by refusing to, you know, uh, to accede to requests, you know, to pressure to postpone the election by going ahead, you know, against all odds. But it now significantly failed where it should have scored 100%. Why did officials arrive late? at the polling units. For what reason? Okay, so I'll just give, um, I'll just give the, the reason that the INEC um, electoral officials gave earlier. I'm try, I, put, I did put that down and I'm trying to get to some. Okay, he, he did talk about the fact that they had transportation, which was logistics um, challenges to get their, their vote, uh, staff to some polling units. He also talked about, and sometimes because of the security challenges. Then he also talked about the fact that some ad hoc staff who had been trained Pulled out, pulled out at the very last minute. So he, that, he said those see, were some of the challenges they just, had. You see, those are just, those are just funny excuses. Those are funny. That ad hoc staff pulled out. There are so many unemployed people out there, and you are telling me ad hoc staff pulled out, so they can't be replaced. What are we talking about? When you are training, when you are doing such a training, you should have some people on standby, some people on reserve, mm. just in case maybe somebody falls ill or for some reason somebody can't turn up. You have at least two to three people who can replace that person. This is a country where you have mass unemployment, and you're talking about the adults have pulled out. That is on, that's an un, untenable uh, uh, excuse. Then to talk about transportation challenges, so where, from where to where, transportation challenges was it taking? materials to the two or three look, um, um, riverine local governments in Anambra State. Was it taking it to where? They should tell us exactly what were the challenges. Is it that there are no vehicles in Anambra State again? Is it that there are no roads in Anambra State again? Is it that or, or the fact that the election, the, the officials didn't even turn up on time. All right. Didn't turn um, up on just time just allow me again, put you yes. on hold. We need to okay. get information from the polling unit of Chukuma Saluda. Go ahead, Femi. Um, what update do you have for us? Uh, and said, no, 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 maybe they didn't do enough homework, they didn't do that, and so on. I'm pretty sure that must have been, I mean, if I look at the quality of the leadership at INEC, I mean, that's really star-studded uh, team. They must have thought it through. Um, probably some hitches or glitches uh, here and there, but I think, quite frankly, we need to think through quite a couple of things, especially access to the Internet. Um, and in some locations, uh, as it were, and yes, training, training, training and skills for those who operate it. Uh, because you don't need to have this, um, I mean, if it stops working, you have to go and get, um, you before you call for a technical assistant, it's now is the next one hour before you have access to a technical assistant. And then the guy comes, fiddles with it, then it accredits another five voters, goes bad again, you have to wait another one hour for somebody else to come. So, but if those who are operated have all the technical skills to be able to, you know, uh, switch and, and turn, uh, as it were, I think that will be helpful. I understand some places that it actually went very well. Uh, there were no glitches, um, a little bit um, curious, um, especially with that of my, um, because I was calling to find out what is happening in my, um, if you are running for this or have this kind of situation, you will be interested to know what is going on in your opponent's uh, own um, ward and, and catchment areas. And um, a little bit curiously, it seems to be working or to have worked uh, smoothly um, in, uh, in some places, including Oga, uh, so to speak. I haven't got from the report we've got into our people, 
voting seem to have gone on uh, seamlessly in most of the uh, uh, polling booths that they have even counted uh, finished voting in many of the polling booths and results already known but here we're still struggling you can still see the resilience of these people the resilience of these people the old people look at them look at their age look at them look at them since 7 30 this morning they have been here they trunched out in their hundreds but they can't vote but they insist that they must vote because they want their votes to count but for you also, just one person accrediting this It's, yeah, you raise a fundamental. If you have over 700 persons here and you have only one person doing the accreditation with one machine that is epileptic, um, functions, accredits two persons, packs up for two hours, accredits one person, packs up again. So that's the um, maybe <laughs> I would have said, were well, we being targeted if. Uh, if I didn't get this report, you know, from around the whole state, and especially in a major stronghold, especially in a places of a major, major strongholds, the thing seems to have packed up, literally, um, uh, as it were. And um, but again, I'm as I said in the morning, I'm a diehard optimist, and uh, I want to believe that in the end the system will deliver. Um, if they're extending that to tomorrow, I'm sure these people will be back here to vote tomorrow. If they're extending it to whenever, these people will be back here because they want to vote. And we want technology that enables all eligible voters to vote. I want to be governor, but I want to be elected legitimately with the votes of the people. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chokuma Solodo, the governorship uh, candidate of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, still hopeful uh, despite waiting in the line for more than uh, three hours to cast his ballot. But he is still hopeful that eventually he will get his time to cast his ballot. But again, he's curious. He has raised uh, some questions about. Uh, capacity, training, uh, the technology, and all of that. He hopes INEC will get its acts together and fix um, what the problem is that would allow people to cast their ballot, including him, who has not been able to cast his ballot for, uh, for as long as he has waited here on the queue to vote. Uh, over to you, Precious. Thank you so much, Femi. We will um, come to you for minute by minute um, updates there at that polling unit. It, is, it has become a polling unit of interest. Thank you so much, um, Femi. You heard what Chukuma Soludo talked about, their access to internet. He talked about training for I INEC staff. Talk to us about your recommendation for INEC um, going forward, especially with this election. Um, some people have recorded a success rate. We spoke to our correspondent earlier, Demola. He said they have even now they are waiting for the votes to be counted. But in some other polling units, nothing has even happened at all. So what's your recommendation for INEC? How should INEC proceed? INEC may need to purge its ranks because the embarrassing situation that we recorded in Anambra State today, heads must roll. They should not give us this flimsy excuse network, uh, some things didn't work, some things didn't work. I have a strong suspicion that some people may be working to an answer to frustrate this election. So much has gone into preparation mm. for, uh, so much has gone into preparation. You know, look, the security element, look at all that has gone into ensuring, you taking care of the security element. Why is it that we continuously, in this country, we continually fail the people? When there's so much expectation, look at all the people that turned out. I'm telling you, even if the election is going to, is scheduled for midnight today, those old women, those old men, they will be we, there. We have to In commend fact, some their people will even Some people will even come, mm. some people who maybe went to, went to the market or went to their shops will even come and join them. So, mm. I know the other right. officials over All there right. had um, better get their acts together. So the thing is this. I'm, I'm afraid we do have yeah. to leave it there. We, okay. we do need to um, go, go on break. But we have to commend the resilience of the Anambra people, especially of the course. aged who have been sitting there all the time. Yeah. They have yes. been very, very calm and of good conduct. And we hope that um, they can cast their ballot in this election. We